is for you because uh, you mentioned that def defensive technique uh, may just become passe and uh, batsmen are going to play in a different uh, mold altogether, which will make uh, cricket entertaining. Uh, that's what we saw with Shikhar. That's what we see with a lot of other cricketers. Uh, but does the advent of or uh, overconsumption of T20 cricket uh, has an, uh, a negative impact on the development of young spinner? Because I think he has to remold his uh, or realign his way of operating uh, the most when it comes to bowling in the shortest format. Test cricket, you need a different skill set. T20, I think you need a completely different skill set. What's your opinion on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with you in, in some respects there. I think uh, this, even though actually in T20 cricket, it's, it's the spinners who are probably the most successful, uh, you know, bowlers. If you look at economy rates of, of most IPLs that we've played over the last five years, you'll see it's actually uh, the spinners who have the best economy rates. But it's, it's different kinds of spin bowlers. It's just Sunil Narayans, it's, uh, you know, Daniel Vittori, people bowling a lot flatter. Yes, that is definitely a concern, especially uh, more and more T20 or uh, shorter format cricket that's played at a young age uh, will definitely hamper uh, spin bowling uh, in terms of the classical spin bowling that you would say, you know, gets you wickets in, in test match cricket. And that is a big challenge that coaches, administrators, captains face, uh, you know, across all levels uh, of how do we preserve that skill of spin bowling, which is your classical loop flight, uh, an ability to, uh, you know, spin the ball rather than, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of spinners focusing on bowling darts and, and, and bowling, uh, you know, different kinds of variations and different kinds of balls. So uh, that is a challenge that's going to take a lot of courage and, and uh, patience somewhat from uh, captains, coaches at various junior levels to have, uh, you know, the courage to play uh, these kind of spinners. But, but it is a concern. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And Dada, following on from that concern, to put a personality to that concern, Harbhajan Singh, do you think it's something that's affected his game as well? Because we've seen him struggle over the last three, four years, just like we're in the Sevag. I think what also matters is, is having confidence on the player. And if you look at Virendra Sevag and, uh, and Harbhajan Singh, they've been in and out of the team. And uh, you look at how they played in the first uh, two years when IPL was to, has just started, and then you see now. Because I feel, uh, especially for someone like Sehwag, he's a, he's a sort of a personality or a player who needs support rather than the sword uh, dangling on his neck all the time. There's just no doubt that his performance has tipped over a period of time uh, because he set such high standards for himself at the first six, seven years of his career. Uh, but I, I also feel that when you are around an international cricket for such a long time, you will go through this phase of one or two seasons where you struggle, where you don't get runs as, as much as you've set your uh, standards, and then suddenly you get back to uh, doing well again. And I think you need a captain, you need people around you or selectors to, uh, to help you through that period. It's happened with everyone. And uh, when you play for 14, 15 years or maybe 20 years, it's not possible to be consistently at the top for such a long time. And I think, especially with Harbhajan, yes, Diru has been playing consistently, but with Harbhajan being in and out of the side hasn't helped him. And, and, and it, could, it could happen to the best when you realize that uh, you've been your premier uh, spinner for a good period of 10, 12 years, and suddenly you're, you're finding, uh, struggling to get a place in the team, and even if you get, you're bowling 18 overs in a test match, you're not the frontline spinner. This is something works at your mind because cricket is such a, such a mental game. Noted television personality and uh, a cricket uh, commentator and host is also amongst our myths, Mandira Bedi. I believe you also have a question for our esteemed panel. Firstly, thank you for calling me a commentator. I'm not one. Um, I've just been a cricket presenter. We have four very great captains um, in our myths, so my question would be to um, anyone who'd like to take it. Uh, we're talking about the changing face of world cricket. Um, how do you think the role of the captain has evolved over these years? Because it's now no longer about manage, managing players on the field. It's about managing egos, managing the media, um, mentoring players. So lots has changed over the years. And what do you see the role of a captain uh, now, say from uh, when you were captain, uh, Arjuna? I think for me, captain is the boss. I, I always felt that uh, when you are a leader, you should lead from the front. I'm not talking about the performances. When you have your players, you need to trust them. Uh, what Saro said earlier about Sevak, any top cricketer can go on a bad run. It has happened to all of us. 
but you need to have the faith on that particular cricketer uh, with the selectors. You need to educate the selectors. Some of the selectors doesn't realize what sort of uh, value that particular player can have. So those are the issues we went through when, when I was captaining. But I always felt that when you are a leader, you take in charge in the middle or even outside. You control the players, you educate the players, and you need to know about the players. I, I went through a really tough time when I took over the captaincy. I was a very young guy. I was about 23 when I first took over the captaincy. But it was a pretty difficult time. But I was blessed by some of the seniors who was surrounding me. But when I took over the captaincy for the second time, I always felt I always wanted to be uh, the players to be comfortable and players to trust me as a leader. And I always knew that if I'm going to uh, look after them, they will produce results. That's what happened to all of us. And uh, I know that there are, when we were playing, it was one manager, one coach. Uh, I think that's it. Now they have about nine or 10. I'll be the last person to have 10 guys in the dressing room with 15 players. I might have a different room for the others because the, the dressing room is for the players. E even for the coach, I always felt the coach job is not in the dressing room. It should be outside the dressing room. Coaching part, maybe planning. I think most of the planning has been done by the captain. I'm sure that all the captains will agree with me. I have gone through a lot of coaches, but for me, most of the senior cricketers, we sit and discuss how to get players out, how to go about it. And uh, the coach's job is to uh, get you to the net, get you right, put you back in the field. And that's the job I adopt. I, I, I always felt that I was uh, pretty successful. And, and what do you see the role of the, the captain today? How much that's changed over the years? I still feel that it should be the same. I'm, I'm sure most of the captains are more keen on uh, taking the second part. I always felt uh, there are captains uh, who are not that aggressive. It, it's the nature by uh, players. Like you, you take uh, uh, some of the players like Mahela Jawad, then he, he's not that aggressive. Even Dhoni looks the same. But uh, take Gangulis or Ranatungas, they were different in the field. So you know, sometimes you need to adopt that, uh, especially when you're playing against Australia or some other countries. And uh, I think that was a success uh, some of the top captains had. Can I quickly add to that? Since sure. we've spoken of coach, um, uh, there's, there's so much talk of younger coaches. We hear, we hear about it, read about it in the papers, but yet the two gentlemen sitting over here who most recently um, retired from the game, why is it that we don't have a young coach, someone who's just retired from the game? Because he knows the strengths and weaknesses of the team, knows the team inside out. So. I'm sure there have been feelers that have come, uh, you know, both uh, your ways. Um, wh wh why don't we see a young coach? Why don't we see a coach that's just retired from the, from the national side, you know, take over as... Right. Who wants to take that out of you two first? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I am younger than Sora, so... <laughs> by a little bit only, so... <laughs> Uh, well, I, I think you do see young coaches. I mean, if you look at across the world, uh, I mean, there are coaches. Generally, there are sort of younger coaches coming through the ranks and, and coming through the system more and more now. Um, I, I think, uh, with, like with anything, I think once you finish playing, uh, a little bit of time away from the game and, and, uh, and an opportunity, I think, sometimes to get a chance to uh, look at the game from a different perspective, to see... Uh, sit back and to be able to look at a game. Uh, I think sometimes when you're playing cricket, you're, you're caught up in the cocoon of, of playing cricket all the time, and you live in a, in a very surreal world sometimes. And just having that time a little bit away from the game and being able to look at it, um, and, and, and you look at it sort of dispassionately, um, it will help. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think in time you will see more and more younger coaches coming through and, and, and coming. Uh, you know, uh, coming, coming along. I mean, Gary was pretty young when he sort of coached us. I think Gary was 42, 42, 43 when he coached us. He'd finished playing for about four or five years from international cricket. So, yeah, I mean, to each his own and each board its own. I think in the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're young or old. I think, uh, you know, you've got to pick the best coach that you think will work for your particular team. That... Sort of, I answered my question. <laughs> Dada, do you feel you're young enough? I would want him to coach today. <laughs> I'll 
put it that way. Yeah, why not? Uh, it's, see, the biggest challenge someone like him uh, who will face is because he just finished playing. And being a coach, uh, it's nine months on the road. And when you have a young family, he's got two boys, I've got a girl who's 11 years old, it's, it gets very difficult to be on the road again for nine months. So it, that's, that's a major part of the decision which, you, which stops you from doing it. You want to do it because it gets you back on to do something which you love the most, which you've enjoyed doing all your life. But that decision you will have to make, and, and, I, and I agree with Rahul that give it a break for four or five months, and uh, four or five years, and then, and then when an opportunity comes, uh, uh, you, you do the job. But at the present moment, Fletch has got an extension, so we can all shut up. But, but you've had those few years, though. Sorry? You've had those few years to so sit back and re reflect. I, I was still playing IPL, so I was still hitting some sixes, some easy runs, and some easy money. All right, so you heard it first here. Rahul, uh, Dada is still going to be playing the IPL this season. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to open up the floor uh, to the audience here as well. Lots of hands going up. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get to all of you. But yes, the gentleman right here. Can we have a mic for him, please? Um, earlier this week, we saw a very uh, disturbing first of its kind, I guess, the world of discipline, or a very poignant first, when Michael Clark uh, took a very strong stance, Mickey Arthur and Michael Clark. All of you have been captains. I want to hear from all of you. What would you have done? Brian, do you want to take that? Yeah, I think I, um, first of all, I think I have the, um, the I most. Like to, I like the laugh on Brian's face. <laughs> the most rebellious team to captain. <laughs> I most likely had to send the whole team home. <laughs> but um, I, I believe that, uh, first of all, you know, looking at it as a player, you know, if my captain and coach um, have a certain strategy to, to get something out of us. I believe as a player you have to participate. And um, not participate in is, is, is sending a message. And uh, not the sort of message you want to send in between a series, a series that you're not doing well. But in saying that, if I put on the captain's hat, I believe that it's something that you could maybe uh, handle away from the scene, you know, okay, that this particular thing happened that evening. The guys did not pitch up with what we wanted from them. Take them aside and talk to them. I think it's very important to keep your team. And what, what you don't want to do, you don't want to actually tell the world what's going on. You want to be able to handle it as a team, um, ensure that the guys understand what you wanted to achieve, and see if you can eventually get it out of them. Um, as I said, you know, the, the team that I captained in the late 90s, right through to the end of my career, is rebellious. And, um, you know, I've had many, many occasions where, you know, you'd love to send a guy home, you know, put him on the first plane back, but you can't. And um, you just believe that there are different ways um, of, of doing things. And um, I definitely would have uh, dealt with that in-house and have my best team on the field. Arjuna, you were a captain who wasn't afraid to speak his mind, how would you have dealt with the situation? I personally feel they handle it very well. I think you need to understand that when you are representing a country, the entire nation, not 15 of, uh, not the 15 cricketers, you are representing the entire nation, you are responsible for these uh, uh, 20 million people back home as Sri Lankans. I always feel that uh, discipline has to uh, uh, when you are in the, in the team. Because when you tour, you tour for 30 days or 60 days, but that's a job you do. You are paid for that. If you don't know how to handle it, as far as I'm concerned, you're out of the team. I think that's the way I have adopted. I personally feel if the captain can take that uh, decision, I'm sure the way it handles is the criteria. I think the Australians handled it pretty well. They gave the, uh, they gave the proper picture the younger guys saw what's happening, and I'm sure none of the younger guys will never get into that hereafter. It has happened to us, but uh, we handle it in a different way, maybe without uh, the media knowing, without the country knowing. There were players who has gone back home uh, without uh, no one knows. So it, it's, it's different, uh, like when it happens in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, or Bangladesh, it's totally different. But for Australia or England, it's not a big thing. I think. Uh, the way they handle it was pretty good. But if we do the same thing, I'm sure some, sometimes the media might go after you or some of the TV stations will go after you. But uh, I personally feel the way Australia hats off to them. All right, more questions 
from the crowd. But before I see those hands at the back, I'm going to come to you guys. But before that, I have to go to my own boss, Rahul Kabul, the managing editor of Headlines today. He's been trying to catch my attention as well. So Rahul, over to you first. My question is on this business of conflict of interest. And I want to ask uh, all of you, starting with Rahul Dravid. Uh, former co selector Mohinder Amarnath said he couldn't drop Mahinder Singh Dhoni when he was going through a bad patch because of pressures of the IPL uh, franchisee being owned by a man who's also the BCCI president. I believe that's very dangerous uh, to have a situation where you can't drop a player because there are commercial considerations at play. Do you think that Indian cricket, if it has to go forward, should immediately end this nonsense of uh, conflict of interest? That you can't be in charge of a team, owner of a team, and also at the same time be the man who's framing all the laws. I want to ask that first to Rahul, and then we'll take it one by one. Look, I mean, that's the, that's, a, that's the BCCI constitution, and the BCCI allows you to do that. You know, I think the BCCI allows you to do that, so that's where we are, and that's the situation. As to how an individual deals with it, I think, uh, so you, you know, if Shrikant, if Shrikant wanted, it, look, if Shrikant... Allows it, the so question looks, is, do you think it needs to be stopped? Do you think it's okay? You uh, I like that pass, honestly. I let that pass because no, there are complexities. No, there, yeah, there are complexities with that, uh, with the answer. There's no, there's no yes and no answer to that. So let's hear I your mean, argument. Yeah, no, the complexities to that would be, uh, well, I, from the way I sort of see it and read it, uh, when the IPL was started, there weren't many people bidding for IPL teams. You know, uh, it allowed uh, the BCCI office bearers or in this case, India Simmons, to actually have a team. Nobody knew uh, whether Mr. Srinivasan was going to become a president in the future. Uh, nobody knew how big the IPL was going to become. So the rules have been framed. No one has gone against the rules of the system. My question yeah. is simple. Do you think it's okay? Do you think it needs to be put to an end? You're explaining the past complexity and the context. My question is straight. Do you think conflict I'm not in a position to make that uh, decision, Rahul. So, I mean, He's I leaving don't, that I don't, I, outside the office. I don't need to cross that bridge because I'm not at that bridge. I'm not in a position to change that. Okay, Me saying see. anything here is not going to make a difference. So I'll, I'll, when I reach the bridge and in my position to do something, I'll answer that question. Okay, before Dada answers, let's hear from the outside. Let's hear from Arjuna Rantunga. I'd like to hear Dada. I will come to Dada. <laughs> before Dada, Dada likes to fish around outside the offside. So let's see what he does with it. No, first, first Arjuna. I think for, for me, country come first. Any player should realize that. They are involved in IPL or franchises because they are playing for the country. They have done well for the country. We went through the same thing. I'll, I, I have to say that it, Lasit Malinga, he was planning, uh, he, he said that he, he was injured while playing the IPL. Then the cricket board wanted him to come back to Colombo. Then straight away he said, I'm not going to play test cricket here after I'm retired. And this, this is a guy who has been fed from the start and brought into a different level from the paracetamol up to the top thing spent by the cricket board, all government money, all cricket board money. And he comes and tells us, no, I'm not going to play test cricket. I'll be concentrating on IPL and uh, 2020. I don't think that is right. Unfortunately, I was not involved at that time. If I was involved, I will never see him playing cricket again for the country because country comes first. If you feel that country is second and the franchises are on top, I'm going to say I'm, I feel very sorry for you Indian cricket. You think there is a problem with conflict? Of absolutely, interest. absolutely. That's, that's nice. You give an outside perspective to it. Let's hear from Brian Lano. You already had the outside <laughs> perspective. There. What, what is your take? Do you agree? I believe, I believe definitely country comes first and um, you've got to, to keep your performance up playing for your, your national team and everything else will fall into place and um, if, if you're such a big uh, uh, draw that um, people are considering um, having you on uh, with your performances low, I think there's a problem with that. But Dada, this is a really big problem, former cricketers, stalwarts often find it difficult to express themselves because of com commercial considerations, because they're now part of the same BCCI mix. So you or Rahul might not tell us what you really think is good or bad for cricket because, you know, it's happened with Gavaskar, it happened with Ravi Shastri, because you're part of the mix, so therefore we won't ever get to hear a frank opinion on whether there's a problem with conflict of interest now. No, there's two ways of looking at it, Rahul. I, th uh, I think, uh, you know, somebody like Rahul Dravid or Sachin Tendulkar, you know, they've been such big names in Indian cricket, 
it's always not possible for them to uh, you know, criticize Indian cricket all the time, and that's not right, because uh, you know Indian cricket is here. Uh, because of what we did on the field and also what the administrators did off the field because that's also a tough job, you know, to keep Indian cricket going. I'll tell you one thing, you know, in, in, in the early 90s or the middle 90s, uh, we would go to countries like England and Australia. We would stay not the best of hotels, get the tough part of the tours, uh, and with all due respect, not looked after well. But I've seen a massive change since the year but 2000. My question is on conflict of interest. Yes, I will come to that. No, I will come to that. And... Uh, uh, I have a massive change uh, with the way we got treated after that, and 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 it's still it's just improving every time. So you got to give credit to people who run who run the board at different stages uh, to take Indian cricket this way. Not only just cricket wise, but the way the players are treated. And with conflict of interest, uh, it's possible. It's not possible. It's just the way you look at it. You know, still being the president of BCCI, you can let the uh, national team run on its own. Yeah. We are coming to this conclusion because obviously India hasn't fared well in the last uh, but two This is an anecdotal instance Mohinder Ramanath cited that he couldn't drop, they couldn't together drop Dhoni because of the presence of N. Srinivasan. And that's see, deeply disconcerting. See, it could also be a belief that you know, this, man, this man can take Indian cricket forward. And, and with due respect, you know, we've had conversations among us because we've played together for such a long time and we've had different opinions. You know, he felt something else, I felt something else, and these are completely different opinions. And it's honest. It's not that I'm on this stage and, and trying to cover up everyone. Uh, we've had a discussion with the Tour of England when India weren't performing, and I had a different opinion. I felt that somebody should be captaining one format of the game, and I've said that on television, where he felt, no, he's the best man to take Indian cricket forward. So everybody will have different opinions, and I still feel that being at the, at the top, you can still let Indian cricket run on its own. And, and if you look at something which has happened yesterday, it is the reinstating of Duncan Fletcher for another one year, which also makes us feel that he'll go on till the 2015 World Cup. So the faith has not just been shown to Dhoni, whether rightly or wrongly, whether India's poor performance or not, poor, or not so good performance, but it has also been shown to Duncan Fletcher as well, where all of us believe that probably they need somebody new to take this team forward. So there has been some consistency in backing someone. Uh, so you're okay with conflict of interest? As long as you do... Uh, yeah, as long as as long as Rahul, you you it, you run it properly. Uh, no, you can st you can be the uh, head of two different institutions and still run. Uh, let it allow uh, run independently. I think that's possible. It's just the way you look at it. I don't know. I don't know if this makes sense, but um, draw an analogy with with football. David Beckham was the face of um, uh, England's 2012 Olympic drive. And he was available for the Olympic team. And, you know, I could put my head on a block that David Beckham was going to be selected for the work that he'd done off the field on the Olympic team. I mean, he's still very fit. But the people that were selecting the team at the end of the day felt that they needed this particular team. David Beckham was not a part of the setup. And um, a lot of people in England were upset. But I believe that it made the choice of picking the best possible team um, for that particular Olympics. I don't know if that makes sense. Add to that, uh, add to what I said earlier, Rahul, I think we were brought up in a different culture. I think playing for the country was the most important thing as far as we were concerned. I think as a schoolboy, we dreamt to play for the country wearing the blazer or the cap, but it's totally changed now. I think it's all about, I'm not saying all the players, majority of the players are more concerned about the financial aspect rather than the, the glory for the country. I think that's the only only area where I get hurt sometimes when you go through some other these cricket games. All right. One final question, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen right here. Can we have the mic for him, please? Okay, my question will be to Rahul because he's my all-time favorite. Uh, it's about the commercialization of cricket, which everybody keeps talking about. And when it comes to the money that you guys make, I hope you make lots of money every time because you win us World Cups and that's great. But when you hear about now there's going to be test cricket under lights as well, then you wonder that are cricketers going to be reduced to being entertainers to just come out and perform under lights? Will there be a limit? What do you think? Would there be a limit for you as a sportsman? Is the sport slipping out of your hands? Brown? Well, I, I think uh, the move and it's, it's a move in the future. I'm not sure whether 
it's even a possibility because of, um, for starters, the, uh, the quality of the cricket ball. To play cricket in the night, the move is really to get, hopefully get more and more people to come and watch test cricket. I think what you're finding today is that uh, people aren't really coming to watch test cricket because of the pressures that they face at work and, and, and the difficulties of taking leave uh, you know, on a, in a working day. Um, so I think that's the sort of move behind trying to, in the future, play cricket in the night. So it, it's a convenient time for people to be able to come and watch. So I think in, in the long run, if, if all things are equal, and uh, I think it's not a bad, bad idea. Commercialization, I think, in, in itself is not necessarily a bad word. Uh, you know, for starters, uh, Brian spoke about, uh, about facilities and, uh, and infrastructure. Uh, not being there in the West Indies and not being available to their players, and he's right. You know, you see incredible talent in the West Indies, but I've toured the West Indies, and I think it's one of some of the most difficult places to play cricket in because the practice facilities in the West Indies are nowhere near or up to the mark as you find in other places in, in the world. And this is for an international cricket team. So it's all the more creditable for, you know, people like Brian from the kind of setup that they've come in to what they've achieved because of the lack of infrastructure and facilities. What commercialization and money does, and has definitely done that in India today, is that the IPL, uh, the money coming into the sport, has ensured that facilities have improved across the length and breadth of this country. If you look at all the young cricketers coming into India today, whether it's a Mahindra Singh Dhoni from Ranchi, a Harbhajan Singh from Jalandhar, a Virinda Sehwag from Najafgar, a, uh, you know, all the young kids coming today, most of the young kids are coming from smaller towns, cities, uh, which would have been unthinkable two decades ago because there were no facilities in this place. I come from Karnataka and Bangalore, and I know that a lot of the money that we get from the BCCI, from all this commercialization, from all this money that comes from the IPL, is actually plowed back into facilities, into nets, into equipment, in places like Bijapur, Tumkur, uh, Raichur, you know, small towns which had no chance, uh, in the, it's young kids had no chance to have access to cricket balls, bats, turf wickets. All these things are changing. And I think that's a great positive of commercialization, money coming into the sport. Uh, you know, there are challenges with commercialization, but there are also a lot of positives. And more money that's come into sport has meant that we find the Indian team today is actually a true reflection of the diversity of this country and a true reflection of uh, this country as a whole and not just cricketers from big towns and big cities. All right, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there completely, utterly out of time uh, on this uh, discussion. Thank you so much for uh, being here, all of you, Rahul, Dada, Brian, and Arjuna. Thank you so much.